Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. Welcome to our weekly live Q&A. We're a bit early today, actually, which is exciting. So as everyone starts to join in, we'll kind of explain what we've got going on. Uh, today, we actually have a member of our community from our mentorship program. We have Andrew Ott. Andrew, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, and also we're going to be answering your questions uh, like we do every week here on Tuesday. Uh, typically, Walker Reynolds is taking the lead on that, and he is unavailable today. He's actually, uh, you know, offsite. So Vaughn and I are going to be taking the lead today, and that's why we took this opportunity to to introduce a new spotlight, like a community member spotlight. And so that's why we have Andrew on. After the first fifteen to thirty minutes of us talking with Andrew, we're going to get into questions, which I have like two questions. Uh, one is going to be kind of we're going to go a little bit deeper into. Um, but yeah, let's start off. Andrew, uh, why don't you share a little bit about, about yourself? For sure. Yeah, so I was uh, graduated from an automation and robotics program in 20, 2020, about 2019. And uh, then I spent a little bit of time in, uh, as a control systems technician, uh, learned a lot about uh, how how pretty how awesome it is to be in the automation field and after that i worked uh, where i am now as an automation technologist for our text barn solutions and um, i found out about uh intellic last year around april and uh from there i was uh knew that i wanted to learn more about uh industry 4.0 and iot so then i dived deep into the videos on YouTube and uh, I learned about the digital mastermind. Uh, found out that it was pretty a little bit out of my budget at the time. So I heard about the mentorship after that and uh, joined that and was super excited to see what the step, the step training was about and uh, worked hard to complete the first step and look forward to being part of this community and learning more from those around me. Awesome. I, I do want to get into your experience going through mentorship program and what that's like in a, a little bit later, but I want to take a step back and hover around the topic of what was it that stood out about our content that was able to help you in your current role? Uh, well, at the time, uh, I was actually between jobs due to COVID. So I was just looking to develop my skill set and make sure I had skills up valuable for um, myself as an automation technician or technologist. So I wanted to learn more about Industry 4.0 and that helped me uh, just probably look into like MQTT and to understand how I could uh, um, become a more skilled technologist. So uh, I guess it ha had a lot of value with knowing how I want to, um, what trajectory I want to take for my career and kind of give me a little bit more focus on where I want to go. So awesome. And one of the things that we love about MQTT, and I'll repeat this because we like to repeat all of our concepts in every video is that is lightweight, it's edge driven, it's report by exception, and it's also open architecture. Um, and that's why we love to share it, and our community loves to share it. And one of the things that we're finding out is some of the industry 3.0 professionals that have had a lot of staying power in this industry have been very slow or not receptive to these ideas have you experienced that uh, at any of your jobs um so in my past job i they were actually in the process of getting things integrated to uh, get to industry 4.0 um, so i believe that was probably the most um, experience i've had with a, a job that uh, covered m most of the automation stack from ERP down to the PLCs. Uh, so I got to see that there and I didn't know as much as I do now. So I can see that a lot of the videos that Walker's doing uh, would have been helpful at that time to allow me to be a, a more skilled control systems technician. Um, so I don't know if I necessarily have an answer to that question. <laughs> oh, so you didn't, you just recently, more recently came across our videos? No, like last year I did, but uh, the current role I'm in right now, um, I don't, I don't necessarily utilize uh, too much IIoT stuff. So I'm 
my current position is a lot of electrical diagrams and BFD troubleshooting. So I haven't uh, seen that, uh, but my current position, they're actually pretty open to IoT and uh, actually getting those devices connected into the dashboard into, uh, into one uh, space. So sorry, I may, may went off topic a bit there. A little nervous. No, no, that's, no, that's interesting. So it sounds like it would have been directly applicable uh, as a kind of a control engineer or, you know, controls technician, but now you're more in a place where IOT will eventually make a lot of value, add a lot of value to the, your current company. Yes, that's exactly uh, how it worked out. So right now the skills I'm learning, I believe will be super valuable to where the, where I'll be going with this company. What's your favorite yeah. video? Oh, well, the, my, the video that really got me interested in pursuing this more was uh, Digital, Digital Factory Mastermind, the one hour video in September last year. So before that, I just joined the mentorship program and did the, I think IIoT mini course was just out that, at that time as well. Uh, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue this course uh, completely. I wanted to sign up for one month and see how it goes. And then I watched that video and I saw how Walker explained uh, the digital digital transformation. And I was like, man, this stuff is awesome. And I want to know how it all works and how I can become skilled in this field. So that was awesome, probably, probably the, my favorite video. Someone asked, uh, they're a little bit late, but they're wondering what company you currently uh, work at, if you're willing to share. I think you said yeah. that earlier. Yeah. Uh, so it's Artex Barn Solutions, but we're now called VES Artex. We merged with the yes and you do uh drives um so i in my in the past i've worked a lot with dfds uh, for the fan and the ventilation systems in dairy barns so i've worked with some installation documents and uh working on send uh setting up the control systems for that uh right right awesome nice. so um if anyone from the community has a question for andrew uh leave it in the chat otherwise let us know where you guys are joining from today we got uh, several of you guys have joined joined in at the top of the hour. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. It really does help. Um, so, I actually have a question for Andrew, Zach. Sure. <clears throat> so, Andrew, and this is something you and I were briefly talking about before we went live. Um, so, one of my responsibilities with 4.0 is to keep track of everyone's progress on their training. Uh, make sure that everybody has all the materials that they need to be successful. Um, and one of the things that I noticed with you that you were blowing through our training like crazy. I mean, you were at a very rapid pace. Uh, and there were others as well. But since we have you here on live today with us, what I, tell me kind of walk me through how you envisioned our training. Was it a challenge to you? And, and tell me kind of how you got through it so fast and completed it uh, like you did? Uh, so how I, the first question is how I envisioned it. Is that what you asked? Right. The training? Um, well, at first, uh, I, when I first started the mentorship, I think it took a little bit before we got our step one deck. So I didn't really know how the step one was going to, how it was going to work. So when I saw the deck, it kind of uh, inspired me quite a bit to, and see it as a challenge to complete this as fast as I can and uh, get ready for the practical that was coming out. So um, I just knew if I spent uh, a little bit of time each night and weekends on it, uh, I'd be able to accomplish that as quick as possible. So when I got to certain points, uh, I started seeing the progress and how, uh, how it was gonna be beneficial to me and uh, I love learning as well. So I saw it as a challenge to learn more about this. And I looked forward to seeing how it would related to the whole IIoT ecosystem and I uh, still look forward to kind of piecing all those pieces together and seeing the, the big picture. So kind of fantastic. That. Well, again, kudos to you, man. You did, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We're, I was very impressed with your progress. And then I noticed that you guys have kind of, had your own little groups break out in the mentorship group, which I thought was very, uh, I mean, Zach and, and Walker and I 
were very um, enamored by that. It was like, you know, to see the interaction and see the organic growth of, of our group of, of mentees uh, like Mario, Dan, uh, Dave Schultz, yourself. I mean, so to see that and to see you guys connect and interact and succeed together, that is what our whole goal is here and providing you guys with the value and to help build this 4.0 army you know, moving forward and moving our di moving digital transformation forward as well. So thank you, Andrew. And thank, thanks to the rest of you guys as well. Yeah, that was uh, Denton. So I think, thank, thankful for Denton to invite me into those groups and uh, very uh, happy to see that collaboration. And I'm learning a ton from those guys. So thank you to them as well. Awesome. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, uh, we have not yet released the step one practical. Um, we are working on that, getting that to you guys. Uh, among other things, uh, FXU module two, we, we really typically do tend to like to bite off more than we can chew. And that's one of the things that we're kind of working on making smoother going forward, which we do see, uh, starting to, you know, come into play, uh, with the mentorship, uh, you know, you guys, I mean, without you guys, we wouldn't even be here. So it's really awesome, uh, that, you know, you're part of that step one program. And one of the things I actually wanted to ask you about was Obviously, like step one, we everyone knows that it includes inductive university. And step two is like part of Frameworks University, which we built in collaboration with Tatsoft. Um, but then there's also like Python and SQL. Like there's other elements of training that in fact we could we could probably just tell everyone what it is because there's still added value of like being part of the group. Would you care to share about that? Like say you would you would like uh like release the step training is that what you're saying that you no, no, no. i'm not i'm not saying i'm not saying that i'm saying that even if someone were to go through you know frameworks university or go through um inductive university and learn python or learn the, the individual steps what beyond just that what benefits does being part of our group okay yeah gotcha yeah yeah uh, uh huge benefits i'd say um so being part of a group with uh, like-minded uh, individuals working towards the same goal and being able to communicate and collaborate, I feel has encouraged me to keep going and to also see like uh, Walker who's already achieved uh, and like uh, has the actual practical experience with this and see and have him helping us along. It provides a huge encouragement, but uh, yeah, this group is awesome. And uh I don't think I would have been able to get where I'm at with my learning and knowledge if I didn't have this mentorship awesome. and the group to spur me on. So. Thank you. I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, that's one of the things that's, it's kind of hard to convey once you're on the inside, you, you really get it, but people that haven't joined yet. Uh, I was actually having a call the other day with someone and um, yeah, you know, it's like once they kind of get, Oh, okay. Then it's like kind of a no brainer, but uh, I'll leave it to the community. If there's any last questions that we have for Andrew, we do want to get to the Q&A section, which we do every week. And I did say that we would only uh, borrow 15 minutes of Andrew's time today. So um, I see we have Dan Riken. Thank you for joining. Uh, Denton Hess gets the shout out from Andrew. Nice. Hey, Cheryl. <laughs> hey, Mason. Thank you. Mason, thank you for joining Mentorship. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I actually filmed the video. I'm going to be sending a personal video to you guys, every, all the new members. Uh, we did close registration. Uh, two days ago uh, on the 31st. And that was like one of our biggest sign up days, like over 20 new members, uh, both mentorship and well, not 20 new masterminds, but tw over 20 new um, members in total, which was really, really awesome. And, uh, but we still got our work cut out for us, obviously. So we're still looking to get the message out there. So thank you. Um, we do have one more question. Um, no, wait, we, we already answered that, which one, which company. Um, Vaughn, do you have a last question? Um, I don't have a question, but I do. I, I do have a comment for for Andrew and and the rest of our guys. Um, uh, I again want to extend my thanks and gratitude to you guys for for joining us and and taking up the mantle of our mission of of moving uh, digital transformation and industry 4.0 forward in the community. Uh, honestly. You know, without you guys, this would not be possible. Uh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, Zach and Walker and I standing on a soapbox talking to no one <laughs> yields no results. So, 
everything that we achieve, we achieve together and everything that we aim to achieve, we're going to move forward together. And it really, I'm really thankful that you guys have joined us. And I'm also thankful that we're able to give you the value that you're looking for. And we just continue to strive to do that. So uh, again, thank you very much. And thanks for your time with us, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to uh, you guys for all your hard work and uh, look forward to learning a bunch more from you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, guys. Uh, so we are going to continue the stream here. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to share my screen here, um, which I did not actually expect this. Many of you guys were joining in and staying, uh, which is cool. Like I like to show the analytics this part, you know, thank you guys for hanging in there. When the graph is going up, that's a good thing. <laughs> when it's staying level, it's okay. And when things are going down, then that means we're not keeping your guys' attention, which means that we need to improve our content. So, but I do want to share, um, actually, I just want to kind of share the discord server because this is where we actually answer your guys' questions. And, um, so like, you know, and we also have this content feed. One thing I do want to share is um, G5 Consulting is uh, David Schultz company. And I asked David for permission to do this. But now every time David posts a video for his, his company, which, uh, you know, echoes our mission, it gets shared in the content feed here. So thanks, David, for that. And if you guys are wanting to check that out, uh, it's a pretty good video. It actually leverages Highbyte and it shares a lot of the same principles that we talk about. Um, if everyone, everyone that's uh, part of the Discord, obviously introduce yourself here. It's a really great place to meet new people. And um, I do want to get down to where the questions are, though. So, so here is a good question. This one actually just came in today. So let me see. Um, wait, let me stop sharing. I want to make sure to share my audio. I want to try something here. All right, let me know if you can hear hear this. Or if this is like too annoying, let me know. Alexander Timofiyev replied to JS about you saying that there might be a case to plug into PLC a connector with some digital protocol and read right, directly. So... We currently working on it. We're all right, all right, that's way too annoying. That's way too annoying. <laughs> Sorry guys. All right, no. So um Alexander from our mentorship program says that there might be a case to plug into a PLC connector with some digital protocol and read directly. We are currently working on it. We're trying to evaluate if it's possible to reach the controller's codes and get data or modify programs to get data. The funny thing is we can absolutely reach the manufacturers of those machines, but their basic position is to vendor lock us. Yeah, something we talk about all the time. Answering your question on how we wish to interconnect machines with other nodes, I would describe it as a brain slug. Uh, brain slug. We want to read discrete IOs directly from the PLC pins, such uh, such way we uh, could do it programmatically and if the controller sets a high uh, for a piston or a motor it uh, it does it receives some inputs from sensors we read that directly from the plc pins and register perform action this main kind of inputs so this is a response to this question the options you list are all compelling yeah so this is where this is where we're talking about oh so this is the core question this is actually some discussion of the question uh, which is, um, let's see right here. Hello, what is the best in-class device for remote discrete input node? I looked into Revolution Pi, Easy Rack PLC, Groove RIO, Advantech Gateway, uh, Tell It Smart IO, iMod, Zoom Edge, um, Wago, and not all of them provide the necessary information to make a well-evaluated decision. I would want to know a little bit more, expound, expound upon that a little bit. Uh, he says he's leaning towards Easy Rack among them right now. I do like the Easy Rack. We do talk about that all the time, support Sparkplug and Sparkplug B. I think there's a limitation that you can only send like 256 topics. And you also do have to configure your tags to that sender. So that is a that is kind of a, a configuration that you need to do. But for a low cost PLC edge node, it's a great solution. Um, I would recommend if you want like the most actual analytics and information you could get on a discrete input module, I would take a look at, now it's not in the same budget category, but the, um, the Bedrock Automation has a really solid um, PLC pl uh, platform. 
Um, basically, the, the what we're looking for out of an edge node is to send all of its data natively over the MQTT protocol. Some of the issues that our manufacturers that we're seeing is, you know, they send all their data over OPC UA, or they send some of it over OPC UA, but then like on this, um, we'll use the Zoom Edge for example. It is working with MQTT natively, and it was sending uh, its input module or its input pins over MQTT, and you could configure that what topic you wanted to send to, publish, subscribe, worked beautifully. Now, the only problem was, though, they didn't think of the use case of writing analog uh, output uh, from Spark Plug B. That just that wasn't available in their interface. So what we what we told them was, um, and this is you'll learn all this in the freeway video that's coming out soon. Uh, but what we told them was, is, hey, all of the necessary information about this device, both inputs and outputs, as well as uh, diagnostic information, what's the temperature of that board? Uh, what was the last time that it started? How many times was it started? Uh, you know, what was the manufacturing date? What is the serial number? All of those um, edge node devices, edge node data points that people may not care about, but and machine learning and AI definitely will care about. Now, so stop making, so that's one of the things is just don't make assumptions about how the data is consumed. And ideally, set up your spark plug and your MQTT connector in such a way that you don't need to do any configuration. Well, the only configuration you would need to do out of the box is set the group ID and the node ID, and it publishes into spark plug B ISA 95 standard. If I have to go into the PLC or if I have to go into the device and say, hey, I want this input to go into this sender, you know, it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction, but ideally, we want things just plug and play drop the node into an ecosystem and move forward. So I know that I kind of stepped away a little bit from the actual question, which was what are the best input and output pins that I would look at. Um, Easy Rack's a good one and also Bedrock Automation. Zoom Edge, if you want wireless um, and you want to be able to do edge compute, Zoom Edge is a good one to look at as well too. Okay, so that was the one question. Now the next question that I have here, let me stop sharing for a second. I want to have to go over to my uh, my Trello board, which I don't, it's a uh, confidential. <laughs> so um, my next question is actually one I want to kind of expound upon and we'll have the next 20 to 30 minutes to be able to do that. And um, it's kind of more of an example. It's something that we get all the time. It's, it's kind of more of like an evangelism uh, question, if you will. So let me, let me see how to pull that up here. And um, so yeah, here, here's the question. The question was from uh, Samaritha. How are SMEs, I know you can't see it right now, but bear with me. Uh, how are SMEs getting to grips with Smart Factory and i4.0 and understanding and adoption? Let me pull that up here. Smart, so let me see. So let me share this. So I'm actually gonna pull up the question here, Smart Factory. So I'll jump to it. So this is actually a really handy feature. I don't know if you can see this because my my uh, thing might be covering up here in the top right, but you can actually do a search and up here on the right, you can actually find topics. It's a really good feature to have if you want to look at a question that's already been answered. Mm -hmm. So um, how are SMEs getting to grips with Smart Factory and I4.0 understanding and adoption? So um, let me actually... Um, Let me um, share my Canva screen because I want to actually um, kind of die. I want to diagram something real quick. So, so this is Canva. I, I make a lot of the graphics in here. So if you guys are wanting to do something like that, it's, it's a pretty cool free tool. Um, this was a presentation I did for like the timeline of 4.0 solutions, but I want to um, actually make a new, a new slide here. So the, the problem is that people, people are stuck in their ways of thinking. And so if you illustrate, if you illustrate it, I think it will really help like dissect the problem. So I want to create a design here and I'll just do a presentation and I want to just kind of architect. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if we, let's see, I want to bring up this thing right here. And so this thing over here is actually what we're going to refer to as our monolith ERP. So this is kind of what 
most people in manufacturing have. I mean, actually everyone has an ERP, but um, most people think that they, that that's kind of where their business runs. Hey, let me see. So I'm going to put this here. So this is our ERP system. So now we want to kind of get them to, to, to move away from this monolith thinking. So the, the way that we have typically done that is through, you know, the automation stack, right? So we have, uh, let me just duplicate this here. So, but they don't really know what that means. So I actually want to actually show you what uh, operator. So I want to kind of show you with, with pictures, what, 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 what it will look like. And if this is boring and you guys don't care about this, I, I, I apologize, but we're trying kind of something different here to explain the same principle, but in a different way. So I want to actually pull up like um, a PC or a um, computer. So a computer will look something like eh, that would probably look like. So this would basically be what we call like a, uh, this is our ERP interface. So this would be like our SAP station. If you guys use SAP or, you know, some other, some other ERP, um, that's what you would use. And then I've seen other plants that, you know, they either do manual control here or they have like a, let's say a wonderware system. Wonderware. We're, we're, it, we're using a legacy example. So this is kind of a, and um, we'll show the network in blue. So I'll pull up a, uh, pull up a line here. So we'll pull up the network in blue to show that this is actually air gapped, right? So this is our, this is our SAP network, our business network. Let me pull up the ERP. So the problem is that, you know, this, this, this part right here, this, you know, this human right here, that's actually doing the manual duplication of data, or, you know, in some cases, if they don't have a wonderware system or they don't have an MES system, then it'll literally be a piece of paper, but let me see if I could pull up a nice operator. And once I'm done with this slide, I'll kind of make it prettier and, and kind of share it out for you guys to use. So this won't, this effort won't be wasted, but um, all right, let me see if you guys have any questions, staying for the duration of the vid, Cheryl, thanks. Dan, vendor lock, hmm. Zachary Stank. Is there a link to join the discord? Yes, uh, there should be a link in the video in the description. Uh, if not, it's intellic.online forward slash discord. Uh, Zach, if you don't think Walker would be offended, uh, uh, what, what's the context, Dan? And oh, oh yeah, please show, tell us your skills. Yeah, no, this is all you guys can copy this. Um, enterprise resource planning. Yes. Oh, yes. ERP defined as enterprise resource planning. Let me put that up there. Okay. Thanks, Dan. So, um, and the reason why I'm actually building this is one of you guys actually, uh, was, was trying to help convey an idea. So we're actually building this as a tool for you guys to use in the community. So I actually want to put the actual machine here. So like we can actually show, uh, the widget here. So we'll, we'll do this though. So this will be our machine and we'll, we'll make it like red or like, yeah, cause it's not connected. So it's kind of a unintelligent machine. And, you know, maybe man in a lot of cases, maybe some of the machines are intelligent, you know, actually well, let's do that. You know, so we have like one, we'll, we'll make one machine green, um, and we'll make one machine red. So this will be like the old machine. They don't use it very often. So it's not really worth it to, you know, they're not, they're not aware of products like the zoom edge and wireless. So like, they're like, Oh, we don't want to run network out to that area of our plant. So we're just going to have it be blind essentially. Um, so the, um, so if I pull up uh, another line here, actually, no, I'll just use this guy. So, so I'm putting this in green intentionally because typically we like to use a different color for what skate it would be, but I'm using this as green because this is from the perspective of someone who's coming from the it world. If you guys have watched the industry 4.0, uh, state of industry 4.0 keynote address that Walker did a, a few weeks ago. That was the, the main topic was there's a bifurcation in industry from the IT up and the OT down. And what we need to do is get the, really the, you guys, the people on the OT side. I mean, if you guys are from the IT side, we've, we've successfully 
you know, you've, we've won that battle, but really the people from the IT side, they kind of view ERP as this monolith that they, they truly do view that if I have, if I hire an integrator to come in and do a wonderware system that controls this machine and I have a plant or, you know, and then I have a workstation there and then I have an operator. Well, maybe let's see if that works. If I have, oh yeah. So we'll, well, that looks like more like a call center. Let's do this guy. So this is like, I don't know. Which one's a good operator? Let's do a technician. Yeah, this guy looks like an operator. So, and we'll give ourselves some space here. So this will basically be what they view. And then on the next slide, we'll do what the reality is. So like, this will be like their view of the world and we'll kind of try to illustrate how, you know, I mean, it should already kind of start to be obvious, like, you know, that this person, you know, is doing this whole double data entry thing. But um, I mean, there are still plants that obviously work like this and there are still ID, IT departments that think that this is just, just a good architecture, right? So, so yeah, so then basically this, this guy runs the whole plant and they think that their business is being automated through an ERP system, or maybe it's like an ERP MES kind of, they were sold a bill of goods that was like this ERP will also function as MES. But what that really means is that you need a person here to actually execute the manufacturing and you don't have a digital MES system that's integrated. Uh, so this is kind of where it currently sits. And so this is not how it's, how it works, obviously. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to illustrate how this piece right here in the middle should you know really be the unified namespace you know so we're just going to kind of illustrate that and let's be quite deliberate about it so we typically use and that's this works good because we're also we we typically use green for the uns so i'm going to pull up an element here shape And then this will also kind of get the IT, it'll be like, oh, okay, the UNS is an extension of the ERP. In reality, the ERP becomes an extension of the UNS. <laughs> but at least if the IT department or the people that run your uh, SAP or your ERP system, if it gets them to be comfortable with it, then this slide or this video has done its purpose. So I want to actually duplicate this. So now this person it still stays here actually, but this person becomes a node in the ecosystem. Oh no, God, no, don't, don't screenshot that. Don't let them think that that's the ERP. <laughs> so this is really how it should function. And then uh, I actually want to put a radio. We're going to put a zoom edge. This kind of looks like a zoom edge. We're going to call this a zoom edge. So, and then I'll do like a dotted line for uh because that's also another issue that people came up. They're like, well, this because this one hasn't gone to 3.0, we can't just go, we need to go to 3.0 before it can go to 4.0. Oh, no, the answer is no. The barrier of entry has dropped significantly. So now this one is going to be wireless. Um, and it's going to, where you, I'm using Zoom Link. There's other products that you could use, but because we're working with Zoom Link on making a video right now, I'm going to give them a shout out. And I'll, you know, let's make this one green. So, um, so we still, or I actually still want to show, sorry if this is taking a minute. I, I'll, if this is valuable, I will go back and kind of clean this up, like I said, but, uh, so let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So it also kind of signifies that it's, you know, it's not quite, it's not playing quite, it's, it's still important, but it's not quite, it's not quite playing as big of a role in digital transformation as IT departments think it is. And that's where the problem lies because they, in their mind, they think, they think that this is digital transformation. I mean, they literally do. They think that if I buy a PLC and connect it to Wonderware, or maybe they even have, you know, some sort of like script here, you know, some sort of script here. Oh, I've digitally transformed. No, you haven't. <laughs> So, uh, 
I'm doing I'm doing my best to keep you guys entertained, but I just see like the line just kind of keep going down and down. <laughs> but uh, thanks for hanging in there, guys. So uh, so then, yeah, this is it, basically. So I don't know if this is like helpful, you know, let me know. But uh, let's put the ERP system and then we'll put actually I won't put Wonderware. I'll put I'll, in this case, I'll use Factory Studio. So I'll bring this down here. We'll call this uh, FS fs uh, 9.1 someone messaging me valuable thanks <laughs> no he doesn't lose the tie can i post mentorship specific question ranuk uh yes please do this is actually a we do this to help you guys as the mentees people that subscribe for free obviously it helps them too but you guys are the ones that actually help make this possible um you know before we were only able to do like videos i mean we weren't even doing le weekly live streams last year so bam or you know we'll just call this our SCADA so it's just you know a little bit more clear because you know you to not to be clear because factory studio technically could operate as your uns so or uh, and frameworks could so so this is the kind of architecture that we're we're talking about and um this is this is this is 4.0 Quite literally, unless you have this, like your organization becomes a body, your organization, your enterprise becomes a self-aware entity. So what does that mean? So, I mean, think of it, your own body, like when you, your sensors have an input, your machine learning and AI immediately processes that data, makes a decision and sends a recommended output for improvement. Um, so once you have that, I mean, I was looking at Tesla's um, profitability last year and every quarter, quarter after quarter, they were able to increase their gross margin. Now, whether that's they did that intentionally to appease Wall Street or or the fact that they're using industry 4.0, which they are or both is kind of inconsequential. The fact is they're continuously improving their process even while they sleep. In this case, you're not doing anything if that guy's not there, you know, and, and the problem is, you know, this, in this scenario, let's say, or, you know, let's say you don't have this even, let's just say you have like an SAP system and they, they think this is transformation. They think ERP is the monolith that runs the whole thing. It, the second that this machine is running a part that's not available in SAP or they need the SAP department to give them access to a particular area of SAP. The, 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 that's that's not happening and they're going to you know they're just going to wait and then your now your ERP system is out of sync the whole point of your ERP system is to be the central place of communication between like your inside sales people your outside sales people your manufacturing your operations your quality you know that all that information is supposed to kind of live in the ERP but then your IT department makes it kind of hard to work with because of this right here because of this because you don't have this, it becomes uh, that this person becomes the barrier to success. And, you know, and as soon as there's an issue uh, with, you know, access or anything like that, then um, then you've no longer your SAP systems out of sync. You're not capturing that data. Um, so so this is kind of where we're we're talking about and and maybe this is kind of confusing because i mean you know if you don't know what the uns is then you'll be like well what's the uns and um and that's where i will link the video here so you can watch that one but uh yeah i'm gonna stop sharing because i don't know we'll see what you guys uh so we got a couple questions that came in from Renick. valuable thanks um cheryl linear mental image instead of interconnected matrix yeah uh, since I joined in January, a bit confused with the overall flow content, mostly from the first batch, including the PDF, et cetera. Is there a way, uh, is there a plan to have inaugural call with a new batch? Uh, did, Renek, did you join it before or after the 14th? Because uh, the call on the 14th was the initial call for everyone that joined in uh, December or, you know, December and January. Okay. So we, we do we are having a call in February. And, uh, so, 
expect an email for that. And we'll be able to kind of get together and go through where you guys are at in your training. Um, Tentatively, I'm looking at the 18th, Zach. Tentatively, the 18th for our mentorship call. Uh, So then you'll be able to kind of ask. It's actually a Zoom call. Walker will be on it. And if there's kind of things that you're stuck on within the training, then that's a good place for that. But if you're like, hey, I don't know how to log in or I don't know what I'm supposed to do next, reach out to us right away and we'll Mm -hmm. get you unstuck. Um, but the, the orientation call should give you a good idea of where to get started. And then, um, but no, that's actually a really good question. We should have a video Vaughn that's like quite deliberate. Here's what you do first. Here's what you do. Second, here's, you know, here's your Python training. Here's your SQL training. Here's Mm -hmm. inductive university. Here's, here's your neck. Here's how to join the discord server. Um, so then, yeah, we're, we're working on making the onboarding experience as we're improving all of these processes as we go. Remember, we're not a mon- we're not a monolith. We are agile, so we are 4.0. We try. We truly do try to embody the stuff that we talk about. So, uh, you know, I was I was making the example that you know the Discord is a good analogy for the UNS because anyone can publish and subscribe to topics. They can consume data, and um, you know make decisions. So. One of the things that I, 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 uh, I don't know, you guys probably noticed, but anytime someone signs up now, they get a little shout out. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And, um, I was, uh, I think, I think that was like really cool to just see, like, like I said, on, on uh, the 31st, everyone was signing up. So yeah, that's actually, you know, I want to do that. Let's do that, Vaughn. How about we do just a, an impromptu zoom call for anyone who's signed up since the 14th or anyone on mentorship we could do something like we did for the mastermind clarity call last week, just kind of informal. We'll, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you on something like that. Um, reach out, send me a PM, send me a PM on discord. And I mean, even if you want to reach out to me and jump on a one-on-one call, I, I, I do try to make time for as many of you guys as I can. Um, so thank you. Cheryl, discrete connections for discrete use cases versus hub and spoke for access to potentially fit for purpose for all uses. Exactly. Um, you're, yeah, you're not, you're not, yeah, it's, it's funny though, because uh, they just, I think when you're thinking from the IT layer up, you don't actually realize what is happening on the plant floor. You actually kind of need to experience it or go through a, an example. And, uh, I feel like we did a pretty good job of that in step two mastermind. Like we do, we go through ERP in detail. Um, so, you know, the problem is if someone thinks they know everything about ERP, then they're like, well, what do you have to teach me about ERP? It's like, no, we got the ERP secrets revealed. (laughs) So, um, if there's any more questions, leave them now. Otherwise we'll go ahead and, um, I'll go through the Discord server and, and check the other channels and see if there's any other questions. Um, I think someone asked if there's a UNS, if this platform is a UNS. Let's see. I'll, I'll share this. Um, so oh, the other day, Walker got a shout out from Jeff Nepper at Canary um, on this blog post. It's actual showing the the efficiency of MQTT over OPC UA um, or Modbus. You can't even see it right there. That's MQTT down there. Um, so, but John Sindrit said, uh, has anyone used this GitHub grid protection open historian? Let's take a look. I've never seen it. All right, hold on. Let me see if you guys can share this. Sharing Google. Oh, wait. Um, Historian, the historian can be a node connected to a UNS. Yes, correct, John. Historian, actually, historian is the topic of the master of our next mastermind session, getting data in and out of the historian via the UNS um, on the 12th. Correct. So let me see. Um, There we go. So this looks like an open historian on GitHub, a high performance measurement archive. 
the open historian is a back office system designed to efficiently integrate and archive process control data example SCADA, synchro phaser digital fault recorder or any other time series data to support your process operations it's a historian the open historian is optimized to store and retrieve large volumes of time series data quickly and efficiently including high resolution sub second Hmm. information that is measured very rapidly many thousands of times per second thousands of times per second wow that is one thing that some faux historians or you know historians that aren't really historians um that they lack is the ability to process high speed time series data um you know i i walker talked about this and you know we talked about this before where like the built-in ignition historian or the built-in Factory Studio or Frameworks Historian works well for 80% of your applications, but where it falls short is like on your enterprise class or your high speed historians. That's where your canary labs would come in. And that's where you could, you know, potentially use this. I'm not going to make a recommendation on it on the spot, but I am going to look at it. So the, the, the format that we actually would use to test this, um, and this is one of the things we're actually working on doing more this year is how can we analyze more software, more hardware, and make best in class recommendations by not just asking Walker, like as if he's like, you know, you know, some more important person than anyone else, but using Walker's framework, using Walker's uh, criteria, a report by exception, edge driven, lightweight, open architecture, does this software uh, or hardware solution meet those requirements? So we would love to be able to have like a mechanism. And I was actually talking with Lily about this this week where we could kind of have like a database or like a, a table where you could like search for products and you could submit new products for review. We review, you know, we meaning the community and Walker and us at 4.0, we review the products and we make our evaluations and we kind of maintain like this sort of a best in class list or whatever. Um, that is something that we have always wanted to do and we're working on, on implementing. So I'd have to take a little bit more long, a uh, quicker look at this. So, um, so what they're showing here is that they're using a SQL server for the event data and for, um, wow, trending data, it's using no SQL. And they have a historian trend application. Yeah, this this are you still? Yeah, this one is pretty uh, advanced. Um, yeah, I'd love I I would love to ask Walker to look at this, but I, I know that he's just so busy this week. So that's why I want to see like if we can teach you guys how to evaluate a product rather than saying, hey, does this product work for us? You bring us the product. Say, hey, Walker, I've reviewed this product. It, it seems to me you know, four out of the four criteria, or, you know, it seems to me three out of the four criteria. And I talked to them about how we can work on getting the fourth on their roadmap. I mean, our whole idea is like to build this army of not just people, um, but not just ideas, but like actual hardware, software products, um, training content, people. Uh, we introduced the industry Ford auto jobs board this week, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's kind of what the whole idea is. I'll, I'll stop, share, stop uh, sharing. That's, that's going to be all the time that we have for questions today. And, um, you know, I do thank you guys for joining. I hope that uh, it was valuable. Thank you for Andrew Ott. Uh, Absolutely. That was, I felt like that was, that was the whole reason for joining today was, was that that was worth it right there. So um, thank you again, Vaughn, do you have any uh, thing you want to add? Um, yeah, actually I do. So uh you guys just uh, stay tuned for uh, Mastermind that's coming up on the 12th. Also, we will be sending out the invites, uh, if not this week, the Monday of next week for our next mentorship call. Uh, and again, just to mirror what Zach said, if there's anybody out there that has an immediate question uh, about mentorship, Discord, anything at all, you feel free to reach out to us uh, anytime. Zach and I are, are here for support of our group that is that is one of our main goals and one of our main uh all right uh, i want to answer this one real quick john Phil yeah, ford john ford or uh john forboard asked 
what would high speed be in con in historian context more specifically? So, so what we like to think of is like anything where it's more than one, more than one time per second is you're starting to approach the areas of high speed. Now, um, now also when you're on, when everything, but now, but there's also different, uh, use cases, right? So application a might have 10 that are at like two times per second and a historian could handle that just fine. So that even though it's high speed, you're, you might be able to get away with that with ignition, but if it's two times per second times a thousand different sensors, now you're looking at the number of like actual writes per second. Um, so that's, so that's kind of where it's not, there's not just one answer, but the general rule of thumb is anything like greater than one second, like you should be getting data every second. If you're not getting data every second, then you're not getting the most value out of your system. But if it's more than once a second, if you can live with once a second, then that's fine. But if you absolutely need all of those transitions within the second, then Walker would recommend to uh, buffer that data into an array and then send the array every second. And Sparkplug B will take that package, that JSON, and fill in your historian value timestamp, value timestamp. In that case, you know, the sky is the limit. You could send an array with a thousand values every second. And it, so every millisecond, you could have a new value. Um, so that would be very high speed, but, but you've actually ac accomplished that in a way that doesn't utilize so much. Well, you're not utilizing a whole lot of bandwidth because you're using MQTT in the first place, but then even more so like you're not sending a thousand payloads per second. You're only sending one payload every second with a thousand values. And your historian can then insert those values back into your database. Now, high speed also matters when you're pulling that data back out of the database. How many, you know, when you're querying that data, um, you know, how good is the querying engine at aggregating that data? So, like for example, if you wanted to look at that sensor over six months, you definitely don't want uh, data points every millisecond, right? You want it to sort of be able to aggregate that. But then also when you dive in to one second, you want it to be able to bring those data points back too. And that's where SQL really tends to fall apart is, uh, you know, big tables and, and accessing old, old data. So, all right, I'm going to stop ranting. Thank you guys for joining. Absolutely. See you guys. Uh, see you guys Saturday for mastermind, uh, step one, anyone who did mastermind step one, or anyone who signed up for the new men, uh, mastermind subscription program, we're going to go through step one together as a group. And we're going to watch the videos and in, in, in a group over zoom and, uh, Walker's going to join in at the end, but we're going to go through step one, which is about four hours. And it's going to be from, uh, 10, uh, 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time to 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So whatever that is for you. So anyone who's already purchased step one is welcome to join. You don't have to join the new mastermind program. Uh, you're welcome to kind of go over that content with us uh, this Saturday. And then next Friday, 8 a.m. Central is the new monthly mastermind, getting data in and out of the historian uh, using the UNS. So peace.